everyone, my name is Sangi Vee. <coughs> this work is co in collaboration with uh, my advisor, Professor Yang Jek Kim. Uh, today I will talk about the right optimization of the pair rights in many core servers using AppDevRest. So the data is growth as the time goes, so we can expect that uh, there is a lot of uh, data to process and store. So uh, in the database application, they utilize the parallel rights to serve the um, uh, massive amount of uh, data and provide the high performance. So uh, we can think of the, uh, the many core server as the CPU technology evolves that in a single server we can get a, a lot of the uh, parallelism and so we can expect that the application will have the, a massive parallelism. And on the other hand, we can think of the high performance <coughs> SSD, which is also can provide the high throughput and high parallelism in a single device. So with respect to the parallel rise, we can, uh, ex uh, we can think about that how the OS file system, the native file system, can handle the parallel rise uh, and the, how the performance is. So before we jump into the, our uh, preliminary evaluation, <coughs> let me just briefly describe the, uh, the parallelized workloads. So we selected two workloads from the FXMark. The first scenario is the shared file rights. We borrowed the DWM workload from the FXMark. In this workload, the multiple processors write private region in a single file. So when there is a pro end processes, they are writing the private join in a shared files. The second workload is the uh, scenario is the pri private file write with following with the uh, f-syncs. We also borrowed the DWSL workload uh, from the FX mark. In this scenario, the multiple processes writing uh, private files, then it uh, calls the f-sync system call to persist the data. So when there is a uh, end processes, <coughs> they are writing the private files, then they issue the f-sync system. Uh, for our preliminary result, we evaluated those two uh, workloads using the 120 core servers uh, as increasing the number of cores uh, uh, running the workloads. So as you can see in the graphs, we can see that we observed that the, the throughput is, does not scale uh, in a DWON workload. And also, <coughs> we can see in the DWSL workload, uh, the Throughput of the uh, the throughput is not uh, scaled <coughs> after for 42 cores. Uh, so based on the this preliminary research, we desi designed the uh, the write optimization for the parallel writes. So rest of the talk is consists as follows. Before jumping into our research problems and approaches, let me explain uh, briefly about the FTFS. So FTFS is a uh, friend flash friendly file system. AppDFS is a basically a local structure file system designed for NAND flash SSDs. And it has a file system metadata which can be written a random write. And also main log area which is write in sequential pattern. AppDFS employs two types of logs to benefit the flash uh, parallelism and garbage collection. First log is the data log which contains storing the dir uh, directory entries and user data. And second log is node log, which is storing the inode and indirect node. In FDFS, they manages the node log entry, basically inode, uh, using the NID. So, and uh, NID is translated to the block address using the NAT, which is uh, node address table, to locate the physical location of that inode. In memory, uh, the block address of uh, certain NAT entry is updated when the corresponding node log entry is the flush. And entire uh, NAT entry in memory is flushed to the storage device during the checkpointing of the FTFS. So the first problem we found uh, from our uh, <coughs> preliminary research is the single file write, uh, the shared file writes are serialized by inode mutex. So when the first thread is trying to write the uh, first head of the region of the file, it will get the, uh, grant a lock for the inode. The, even though the second thread is trying to write the disjoint area, it will block by the inode mutex, or, and some other writes also do that. So 
this is the first problem we found. And second problem is the high processing time of the F-Sync system call. So this is shows uh, the how the FTFS is processing the F-Sync system calls. First, when they, uh, when they uh, process the F-Syncs, they flush the data. And then they flushes the whole inode uh, no, uh, log entry, even though we uh, modified the small portion of the inode. Uh, and then we found that the IO blocking time uh, during the checkpointing, because we only stored the uh, modified NAT entry in the memory, we have to flush the whole entire NAT table into the SSD at some point. So FTFS uh, call triggers checkpointing every 60 seconds. So when the checkpointing is triggered, they flush the entire NAT table to the SSD. Uh, SSD. Well, during the checkpointing, the FTFS blocking all incoming IOs to prevent the modification of the file system metadata, including NAT. Uh, we identified three uh, performance bottleneck in FTFS when we doing the parallel writes as follows. The first is the serialization of the parallel writes on a single file. And second is high latency <coughs> of the FSync system call. And third is the IO blocking time uh, by checkpointing. To, try, uh, to solve these problems, the uh, first approach we take is the, employing the range-based locking mechanism. To uh, allow the uh, parallelize on the single file, we have to manage those mar uh, multiple reasons, which is not overlapping. So <clears throat> we, uh, we implemented uh, the range-based locking mechanism using the interval tree so that when the first thread is trying to write uh, the head of the files, we can grant a lock. And in, when the second thread trying to uh, non-overlapping, uh, trying to write the non-overlapping regions, we can also grant the lock. But the, when third thread is trying to write the overlapping region, we can uh, immediately know that that is the uh, overlapping with the thread B, so that we can block that thread. The second approach to second approach is the. Uh, to get a high, uh, low latency of the F-Sync processing is uh, the, uh, the, sorry, from when F-Sync is called, uh, FTFS has to flush the data and metadata. Uh, as you uh, as you can see, the, uh, the small, even we modify a small portion of the inode, we have to flush in unit of the blocks because they are using as a block device uh, uh, the SSD. And also, that means that F-Sync uh, latency is dominated by the block IO latencies. So to mitigate this high latency and write amplification, we propose the MVM node logging and fine grained uh, inode. So by flushing only modified region of the inode, we can get the uh, uh, high latency or, and also the less write amplification. This is how uh, we uh, do the node logging on MVM. First, we move the NAT and node load into the MVM. And when the FCK is triggered, we first date, uh, flush the data. And we also flush the inode into the node load. Please note that, that uh, for now, it does not include the technique with uh, fine grade inode. So they have to flush the entire inode to the MVM node load. So, we look into the uh, inode structure in JSON and FTFS. There is a lot of reserved space for the uh, 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 block address for data blocks, which is trying to be fit into the block size. So we removed uh, such kind of uh, reserved area because we can write in byte granularity into uh, NVM. So we called it a fine grained inode so that we can benefit uh, uh, of the byte addressability of NVM. Uh, and fourth approach is pinpoint NAT update. So frequent FSync will uh, trigger the checkpointing in FTFS, and after, uh, checkpointing after FTFS will block the all incoming IO during the flushing those NAT. So to element, eliminate the checkpointing completely, we propose a uh, uh, pinpoint NAT update techniques, which is Basically, uh, when we have to update the NAT entry, we directly update to uh, MVM. Uh, 
uh, when the FSync is called. Therefore, checkpointing is does not require to uh, purchase the entire NIC table by uh, triggering checkpointing, so then we can completely remove the uh, I/O blocking time. So as shown as in the figure, when the FSync is called, we will just directly modify the uh, NAT entry in the MVM. So uh, we can we can benefit from the uh, byte addressability and high speed of MVM, while we can allowing the uh, allowing the foreground I/O is coming uh, when while we are updating the NAT entries. To evaluate our uh, proposed idea, we used uh, 120 core servers with the uh, in Intel MVME SSDs, and we used the FX Mark to evaluate. Uh, we also used the DWOM and DWSL workloads. Uh, we implemented the FTFS, uh, our ideas into the FTFS, uh, uh, and also we emulated the uh, MVM using PMM device on certain uh, RAM region. So for the shared write case, which is DWM workloads, the baseline is uh, original FTFS. It does not scale as shown in the begin of, beginning of this presentation. Uh, when we allow the parallel writes using the range lock, it, it starts to scale. Uh, uh, the throughput is increased uh, as we allowing the parallel writes. But the node logging uh, is showing the same throughput as baseline because in node logging approach, we uh, don't have range log mechanism, so they cannot uh, write into the same file. So in the integrated uh, uh, is the including the range log mechanism on and also node logging mechanism. So it shows uh, uh, 15 times of uh, performance uh, throughput improvement in uh, at the 15 cores, and 6.8 times uh, of throughput in, uh, improvement at the 120 core. So in frequent uh, F-Sync scenario, which is DWSL workload, uh, the baseline is uh, showing, uh, is not, does not scale after 42 cores. Uh, with the range lock, uh, is also showing similar uh, trend with the baseline because they, uh, in DWSL workload, they are writing private files. So there is no uh, two thread is writing the same file. That's why a range log is showing similar performance. Uh, when we uh, applied the node logging, uh, actually the FSync uh, is affected, uh, can benefit of the MVM speed and also uh, the fine grained inode. Uh, it can, uh, it uh, its uh, throughput is improved even after 42 cores. So in integrated uh, implementation, which is including the range log and node logging, is also shows similar patterns. Uh, especially uh, after 70 cores, uh, proposed ideas showing the uh, uh, signif uh, significant uh, performance improvement. Uh, at the 120 cores, uh, we uh, observed that the 1.6 times of throughput improvement. Uh, as a conclusion, we identified performance bottlenecks of F2FS when we writing parallel writes. Uh, first is serialization of the shared file writes, and second is high latency of that sync, and third is IO blocking time. Uh, to solve this problem, we proposed the file level range log and MVM load logging, and the pinpoint NAT update uh, so that we can pro, uh, solve the, all those about the problems. Uh, thank you for listening. I will take that. Thank you. Any questions? So what's the uh, mechanism by which the uh, application software can uh, actually request locking on the range of the uh, of that I'm uh, the question is the how the range log is exactly working? No, I mean I understood the, the range log mechanism, but uh, how can the application? Yeah, I know, I know. But when when an when application when you write a program, opens up a file, gets a file handle, right? 
then to test log only a part of that part. Yes. Is that something that is uh, reflected today? Is it possible today for uh, any writing software? Uh, in writing software, I think it can possible because uh, you can, we can think about table file in a database, and each table entry will be uh, located in specific region. And if we can release such kind of uh, parallel writes in storage engine of the database, we can simply uh, delegate such kind of uh, file uh, organization writing ordering to the file system so that. The uh, storage engine of the database can solely uh, uh, focus on the uh, query processes, but I think it requires some uh, uh, modification of the storage engine in existing databases. Any other questions? I just have one question. Then um, your experiment is use rather large persistent memory, thirty two gigabytes, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, if you move that to the SSD, say, yes. uh, do you think that the effect on performance might be identical, worse, better? Uh, when we move the MVM yeah. to SSD? For example. For example, uh, I think, uh, if I understand correctly, unless they provide the byte addressability from the SSD side, I think it will remain the same. Thank the speaker again. Thank you.